Okay, so the topic of discussion today is overcoming depression. But before going into that, um, I would give the talk, ask questions, and then at the end of the talk, I would invite questions. Is that okay? Okay, good. So the topic is overcoming depression. But before we go into depression, um, what would you say health is? If you want to define a healthy person, what would you say a healthy person is? How would you define a healthy person? Anyone? Okay, who do you say a sick person is? They're sick. <laughs> what, what characterizes a sick person? They're weak. They can't eat, yes? What else? They can't work, yes? What else? Loss of appetite, okay. So a lot of what you people are saying is true, but it's focused on the physical, okay? So the World Health Organization defines health as a state of, of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. I do not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Okay? A complete physical, mental, and social well-being. I do not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. So if we take that definition into perspective, we have a lot of sick people. Is that not so? <laughs> We have a lot of sick people, not just physically sick, but we have people who are mentally ill and we have people who are socially ill, okay? So for a person to be defined by the World Health Organization as being a healthy person, the person has to be physically healthy, mentally healthy, and socially healthy, okay? So we're going to mental health. What is mental health? Mental health is a state of mental well-being that enables people to cope with the stresses of life, realize their abilities, learn well, work well, and contribute to their communities. Can I go over that again? Mental health is a state of mental well-being that enables people to cope with the stresses of life, realize their abilities, learn well, work well, and contribute to their community, okay? So this is also a World Health Organization um, definition of mental health. And I'm glad they, they placed cope with the stress of life. Causing life, are going to get stresses. It's unavoidable, okay? But you should have the ability to cope with the stresses, realize your abilities, learn, work well, and contribute to the community. Because at the end of the day, we want productive people. You know, your country needs productive people. The world needs productive people. And you can only be productive if you are able to deal with stress. Is that not so? If you can't handle stress, <laughs> you would be very very unproductive, okay? So that's the definition of mental health. And our mental health is a base, basic human right, and it's good and socioeconomic development. That's what I'm saying. You need to be healthy in your mind to be able to grow personally, to be able to grow within your community and for socioeconomic development. You have to be sound. You have to be seen. Okay. So men mental health conditions include um, disorders, psychos, and uh, other mental states that are associated with significant distress, impairment of functioning, or risk of self-harm. So um, what are the de determinants of mental health? So um, there are 
two things. It's like a scale. We have um, what we call risk factors for mental illness and protective factors for mental illnesses. And throughout the life of an individual, since you are born till the day you are die, you die, you are at risk of mental illness. Okay? And so it depends on, on the risk factors and the protective factors, okay? So what are the risk factors? So the first risk factor can be genetic risk factors. So studies have said that people with first degree relatives who have mental illnesses are three times more likely to have a mental illness, okay? So there are genetic factors that predispose a person to mental illness, okay? There are also biological factors that predisposes a person to mental illness, okay? Um, you may have a brain injury or an infection in the head that may cause imbalances in your neurotransmitters that may predispose you to mental illness, okay? And also things like substance abuse habits, can predispose you to mental illness. Because what um, substances do is that they, they trigger our neurotransmitters to send faster impulses in the brain, okay? And so it disturbs the normal balance of the neurotransmitters in the brain. And that causes disturbances in function of the brain. So that can predispose you to mental illness. And a lot of social factors. A lot of social factors like poverty, inequality, violence, political uh, environments, social environments, economic environments, all of that can predispose a person to factors that a person for mental illness. Um protective factors having a good family support system, having a good support system, having people give you positive affirmations, okay? Those are things that make a person confident and that protects a person from it. There are people who um as children, they are loved. They are told, ah, you are beautiful. You are confident. As they grow up, they, you find out that they become so confident. No matter what they go through, they have that, that confidence to face life, okay? Unlike children, you useless. They are fearful. And um, it has been shown who are ex are more likely to come down with mental illness than people who are exposed in the older phases of their lives. So it is very key what we say to children and young adults. We have to be very, very careful, especially in our home environments. You know, a, a child can just do something. They're very spontaneous and you really bash them. We have to be very careful. And as young people, the things you say to your friends, I know sometimes you say things and people just shrug it off, but inside that person, it has really hurt to them. So we have to be careful because those are the things that, that either builds a person or breaks a person. Okay. So, um, I would like to ask, um, people, what are the risk factors in your environment that you think predisposes you to mental illness? What do you think you are at risk, or maybe not even you, what do you think your friends, your community, your sisters or brothers are at risk of that may predispose them to mental illness? Yes. Rejection, good. What else? Brokeness. Brokeness, brokeness in Broke money. Thing. 
excuse, right? Social risk factors, okay? What else? Gender-based violence, exactly, yes? Yes, good. What else? Okay, yes. Pardon? Peer pressure. Peer pressure. Is that true? How many of you have been exposed to drugs? I'm not, I'm not asking how many of you have taken drugs. <laughs> how many of you have been exposed to drugs? Yes, ever. Good. And um, how many of you resisted the urge of taking the drugs? You took. And mind sharing your experience. What? So that's a, that, that's a risk factor for depression. That's a risk factor for depression. Because now... Uh, you you hate yourself. What did I do? That's a risk factor for depression. Um, more answers regarding drugs. How many of you have been exposed and what did you do? I know a lot of you have been exposed to drugs. Stop being hypocrites. Who? Who? <laughs> it's a safe space. Don't don't worry, you won't be judged. I, I won't judge you. <laughs> just uh, uh, not even cocaine or heroin, just even recreational drugs. I mean, yeah, yeah, alcohol. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, like to me, mm -hmm. I started judging myself. You start judging yourself like, hey, now, sasa na ka hapa. Now. So, like uh, I was saying, you start judging yourself. Um, eh. Oh, uh, that girl, eh, that girl, and a fuck way wangu. Nasjim bona and I end up come to Mwingi name bona kuchi kwangu. A la funa kaila designer. I'm a mini swambaya. I must jaways. I want to jangle. I need to see now. What am I lacking? What am I lacking is this. What he has said. Uh, uh, so <laughs> so oh, okay. So he was, he was saying after uh, interacting with drugs, he started judging himself. I think that there's a but now since he was doing drugs, the girl preferred another guy for him. So he was asking himself, what's the matter with me? Am I not good looking? What don't I have? Yeah, I hope so. That's so, so see, the, the, the thing with, with drugs is that um, it gives you a short high for a short period of time. And it takes away your sense of reasoning. It takes away that part that tells you no. It takes away that part that inhibits you, okay? And then when you do those stupid things, you end up regretting and it starts bringing guilt. It starts bringing shame. And that is where it starts leading to mental health issues, okay? So those are the things that, that are risk factors for mental illnesses, especially in our young generation, a lot of young people are exposed to drugs. That's the truth. A lot of young people are exposed. And it comes in very nice. It comes in very 
like pills. It comes like they put it in cakes, in parties. They put it in whatever. Yeah, all kinds of sweets. And you find yourself falling into these things. And let me tell you, it doesn't help. It's worse getting out than getting, it's easier getting in than getting out. It's a struggle getting out. So even before I go into the, 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 the thing about depression, I just like to encourage young people to be firm. Be firm with your friends. Be firm with your colleagues. I am not going down that road. Because it's a struggle. There have been people who have gone to rehab and gone to rehab. They've never been able to come out of drugs. And it just destroys your future. Okay? So we have to be firm in our interactions with our peers in what we are deciding to do. Okay? Okay. So in terms of protective factors, yeah. What are the protective factors around you that you think um, prevents you from mental health illnesses? What do you think protects you from mental health illnesses? Yes, please. Self-confidence, good. What else? Yes, ma'am. Uh, church. Good. I'm so glad you said that. I would have been disappointed if you didn't say that. <laughs> what else? Good company, yes. You speak out when you're stressed. Thank you. Family, family. You see, those things are protective factors that make you feel safe, that make you feel confident, that make you feel loved. Okay, so these are the things that protect you from mental health. But there is a but. It's not a hard and fast tool. There are people who have never been exposed to these risk factors that end up having mental illnesses, okay? And there are people who have been exposed to all of this that are so tough, they don't have mental illnesses. It's not a hard and fast rule, but studies have st shown that there are risk factors for coming down with mental illnesses. So what is depression? Depression is characterized by persistent sadness, a lack of interest or pleasure in previously rewarding or enjoyable activities. It is also associated with disturbances in sleep, appetite, tiredness, poor concentration, and suicidal thoughts. Okay, it's kind of a bit of a mouthful, but I'll go over it again. Depression is characterized by persistent sadness, a lack of interest or pleasure in previously rewarding or enjoyable activities. It affects sleep, appetite, causes tiredness, poor concentration, and may also come with suicidal thoughts. We would go through that in details in a bit. But what causes depression? People have been asking, what are the causes? What, what, what makes a person depressed? So science has not been able to give a hard and fast answer for depression. But it's saying that it's a complex interaction between psychological and biological factors, just what I said, risk factors, okay, can be genetic, can be socioeconomic, can be many, can be habits, okay, so those are risk factors. But then they've also said, um, suggested that it's a disturbance in the brain serotonin or what we call neurotransmitter activities, okay, so serotonin transmitter and um, clinical trials have shown that a disturbance on imbalance in the serotonin levels can lead to depression. But things like um, childhood events, loss, unemployment, medical illnesses can contribute to and catalyze um, the development of depression. And there are always treatments for depression. So um, I would like Liv had shared uh, questionnaire in your group. Do you have it? Just check your phones. 
check your phones kindly. For those who are part of the, the, the youth group, check your phones. And there is a question here that I want us to go through. It's called the patient health question yeah, PHQ-9. So it's a tool that is used to diagnose depression. It's a, a self-administered um, screening tool that we use to diagnose a person who has depression. Um, Okay. Okay, good. So um, at the top, it says patient health questionnaire, PHQ-9. Um, for those who don't have it, can you share? For those who have it, can you share with those who don't have? So we all see. The last often have you that? by any of the following problem. Over the last two weeks, one has had any of the following problems. Any of the question. Little test of pleasure doing things. Scored from zero to three. So it's in things, not at all, zero, several day two, nearly every day three. So it's saying over the last two weeks, how often have you been bothered by the following problems? Little interest or pleasure in okay, so I think we continue. We continue. So these is the result of what we've done, okay? So I'm going to read out the results and then you assess yourself. This is a screening tool for depression that we use a lot of times with patients. So you've basically done my work for me by screening yourselves, all of you, okay? So this is personal. This, this, this is personal. So you know your scores, okay? For people who have scored five and below, um, that um, represents mild depression. For people who have scored between five and 10, that's moderate depression. For people who have scored between 10 to 15, that's moderately severe depression. And for people who have scored 20 and above, that is severe depression. And I need, I need, sis, can you call Sister Evelyn and Pasty? For people who have scored 20 and above, Please meet me after the, the meeting. Hmm? For people who have scored, I'm serious. For pe it's not a laughing matter. For people who have scored 20 and above, please meet me after the meeting. Okay? Okay, good. So this is just a screening tool. But sometimes we just say, oh, this we use depression so lightly. I am so depressed. We don't really quantify what we feel. So what we have done today is we have quantified what we are feeling. And Sister Evelyn, I've asked the people who have scored 20 and above to meet me after the meeting. So we would just have a discussion with them. You can do that individually. You can, Sister Liv, you can share my number. You can send me a text, but just reach out to me, okay? So we have quantified how we are feeling, okay? So that's the exercise that we have done. And do you feel better or do you feel worse? Or scared? You are scared. How do you feel? Tell me. How do you feel after the exercise? 
You're anxious. Okay. How have you felt? You've quantified. You've because qu you people have said, "Oh, we're having issues with depression." So now you have quantified. You have really been able to measure what you are feeling. So how do you feel now? Relieved. Some people feel relieved. More answers. How do you feel out after the exercise? Anxious. Alarmed. Good. So that means that means we need to act. That means we need to act. Okay? So it's good that we have identified a problem and we are working towards solving the problem. Okay? Okay. So don't 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 feel bad. We would sort things out, okay? Good. 